I was just watching the discussion with Peter Mansbridge and Stephen Harper on CBC News, and some interesting points were made. Um, Peter Mansbridge was trying to point out that um, a coalition, if such a thing were to occur, wouldn't in fact be un-Canadian. It's actually constitutional. It's legal. If the Governor General okays it, then it's perfectly constitutional. Um, to which Harper replied, I don't care to get into a quote, constitutional theoretical discussion with you. <laughs> Harper, oh, anyway, he just can't help himself. Um, Pierre Mansbridge asked him, if he was in the position of a minority, what if the Liberals got the majority and you're in a minority and another member, another party member, you know, leader of another party were to come to you and suggest that you form a coalition, would you be against it? To which Harper didn't seem to want to answer definitively, he just kind of said no. And so Peter Manch would say, so you'd say no, so you'd say no. And so then finally Harper explained that he wouldn't because he didn't think that Canadians would want another election, to which Peter Manchwich pointed out that uh, I would actually prevent another election. So Stephen Harper was literally saying here that the choice that Canadians have is between a majority conservative government, reformist really, or a coalition. Recent polls have come out or over months now showing that people don't apparently want a coalition, even though it's perfectly constitutional and not a bad thing. It's democratic. There's nothing wrong with that. But people have this idea, I think, because uh, Harper's managed to brainwash some people, or, or, you know, according to these polls anyway, that people don't want a coalition. Um, so I think Harper's betting on that, actually. Um, polls have also showed, if you rely on those polls, that uh, Canadians are tired of minority government. And there's nothing wrong with minority government. We have the health care system we have, for example, thanks to a minority government. Because it forces the parties to deal with each other and see what they can agree on. And some really good things can benefit this country. Can, you know, a lot of good things can come out of it. So there's nothing wrong with minority government. Again, this is all part of democracy. <laughs> minority government is, is a democracy at its best, frankly. You know, the less power, the less power is centralized, actually, the more it can benefit everybody. Um, but that's not the way Harper, Harper operates now, is it? So, in my opinion, he keeps pushing the idea of, of a conservative government being possible because I think he's relying on these poll results that Canadians don't want another minority government, even though the problem hasn't been a minority government. The problem has been that Harper has refused to work with anyone. He wants to run this country like a dictator, clearly. So, He's the problem. It's not uh, having a minority government that's a problem. It's Stephen Harper. But um, going on that, that people don't want another minority government, I think they don't want another Harper government, I think. But anyway, he's going with the, uh, the assumption that people don't want any uh, minority. They want a majority. And so he's trying to tell everyone that if you vote for him, you can get a, a Harper minority government. And that's what you want, isn't it? If you don't vote for Harper, then you're going to be stuck with a coalition. And that's going to be a bad thing. So he's trying to, that's his only, uh, at this point, you know, with all the scandals and everything, I think this is, uh, he's trying to use fear into enticing people to vote for him. But like I say, I think there's more to this than Canadians not wanting a minority government. I think they're tired, a lot of people are tired of the Harper government. That's my two cents on that anyway. According to Harper, everyone else is to blame. The reason why this minority government is not working out is because no one will work with Harper. It's not that Harper won't work with everyone else, as everyone else is saying. As you could see in the debate, he would not really participate in the debate. See, the problem wasn't that that um, Harper wouldn't participate in the debate. The problem was that they wouldn't participate with Harper and ask him all the questions that he wanted them to ask and to, um, I don't know, bow down, kiss his feet. I don't know exactly what he wanted, but the problem is them. It's not him, you see. But what's Harper, what's, what Harper's trying to say is that they won't work with him. See, here's Harper trying to control everything, make everything the way he wants it to be. He's a control freak by nature. If you read the book um, Harperland, uh, people who have known him describe him, and it, the, the very clear picture is painted of Harper as being, by nature, an untrusting, paranoid, controlling person. This is described by people who have known him as, quote, a personality trait. <laughs> That's quite a personality trait. That's not a uh, personality trait you want in a, in a leader in a, in a democratic country, is it? But anyway, he's trying to, to make, he's trying to convince Canadians that the reason why this minority government hasn't worked is because no one will do what, what they need to do. And what they need to do is do what Harper tells them to do. 
it's hilarious. He's the problem, obviously. The Canadian public doesn't get this. Oh my God. But I think uh, more and more people have to be getting this. I mean, if the debate, the, the debate was a visual example of this, of him visually not participating in the debate. So, uh, <laughs> it's, from my perspective, it's really ridiculous. And uh, his argument, um, what he's going by here, uh, his attempt, his strategy of getting in is, in my opinion, pathetic, and I don't think it's going to work. Okay, and then uh, to briefly touch on some other news uh, issues that have come up lately, um, conservative MP said on Planned Parenthood. Uh, this has caused a lot of uh, quite an uproar, and um, Harper has uh, said that he actually doesn't, it won't be going along with this, but this is what the spokesman said of Planned Parenthood. Let me tell you, and I cannot tell you specifically how we used it, but these petitions were very, very useful, and they were part of what we used to defund Planned Parenthood because it has been an absolute disgrace that this organization, the organization sorry, and several others like it have been receiving one penny of Canadian taxpayers' dollars. And of course, it's pissed off a whole lot more people at the Conservatives, and uh, so Harper's been um, denying this, saying that that's not, he spoke out of turn, that wasn't part of the script, <clears throat> and um, so not to worry about that. Nevertheless, it does have a lot of people um, a little bit upset. The conservatives seem to be doing a lot of flip-flopping lately. Um, like I mentioned before about corporate tax, Harper is now saying he's going to go back on plan with his budget. He's not going to change anything. He's going to stick with the old budget. Remember, originally he said corporate tax is a good thing. It benefits everyone. And then when, they, when the three, his three uh, opposition leaders put that to him in the debate, okay, defend your, your cutting of corporate tax, he says, well, that's not in the budget anymore. Yeah, that's what he said to, to the Canadian people. I was saying, oh, yeah, it is. Sure, we'll go back and we'll have the same budget. He stands behind the same budget. He's going to screw, I'm going to screw you all over, he's saying, like, like I have before. You know, not only free trade, but the same old crap, the same corporate cuts. He's not going to go back on anything. He's going to stick with, he flip-flops back and forth. But the conservatives mean, where the hell do you stand? You know, if you're going to lie, you should come up with a story and stick to it. I mean, all but the dumbest criminals know you don't fit flop back and forth. You pick a story and you stick with it. This is just exposing him as being full of it and trying to promise everyone everything they want. Vote for me. I'll do what you want. But if you, if you don't want this, I'll, I won't do that. You, you know, you can't please everybody. You have to say, I stand for this. I don't stand for that. The Harper is... Anyway, there's a lot of flip-flopping, and a lot of this, I think, is down to desperation. And Harper trying to look strong and feel strong and keep his supporters believing in him, I think, because they know that they don't think his popularity is doing very well. Um, a, Har a Harper spokesman, <laughs> right, yes, lobbied in the uh, Montreal Port Authority, trying to influence who would become the president. Uh, of which he had no right to interfere with that, and this has been in the news recently. Tapes have come out with these conversations, and I've been trying to listen to these tapes. So if anyone has a link to them, please share this with me, because I cannot find them anywhere. On the National, they're saying that these were over YouTube, and I've been looking on YouTube, trying different uh, words, key words to look up, um, and I was only able to find one, which was a part two of apparently a two-part a video of this discussion, um, and it had the, this uh, spokesman's name, and so this was clearly the right video. I clicked on it and it said, sorry, this video is no longer available. So apparently there's a screening going on here. Harper's people are um, taking down these videos that feature this audio. Harper has said publicly that nothing was wrong, nothing was done wrong. This is normal, he said, it's perfectly fine. So if he has nothing to hide and it's perfectly all right, well then what are they hiding here? Why don't they just let people hear these audio tapes? Because I just find that a little strange, that they're so hard to find. And like I say, there's one video that's taken down. So if anyone knows of, of an existing YouTube video, which the national claims that is they're on YouTube, but if anyone knows where there is, a, there is one or uh, on, on another website, please let me know so I can take a look. I li I'd like to hear these. If there's anything really good, I definitely would share it on my channel, but I'd like to listen to them. 
Um, and I'd like to point out that uh, colonist uh, Jack Knox is pointing out that, that he believes that there is a, quote, scandal fatigue occurring. That's his theory for why he feels that not enough Canadians are as upset and pissed off at the Harper government as he thinks they should be. Um, similar to Rick Mercer, comedian Rick Mercer, who um, believes that um, that Canadians are... That there's something wrong that they just don't care anymore. That's his theory. People are, are so used to uh, corruption that they expect it at this point. They're no longer shocked by anything. And they don't trust anyone. They don't really care. Whereas uh, Jack Knox is claiming it's scandal fatigue. People are just worn out with hearing about all these scandals. Um, well, I actually don't think that it's either, frankly. I think a lot of people do care. I think to an extent we are used to it. And uh, I don't know if fatigue really applies because most people don't really get that involved in researching to the extent where they would really be fatigued by it, I wouldn't think. But to an extent, people certainly are used to it, but I think it takes an accumulation of things for it to really sink in, unfortunately. I want to point out uh, there's a new poll on National Post now. It claims that Harper's popularity has gone up a little bit more <laughs> in light of all these scandals. Get this. The Conservatives are at 37.4%, the Liberals are at 24.9%, and the NDP are at 20%. The question was, if an election were held today, which party would you vote for? According to this, the Conservatives are roughly 13 points ahead of the Liberals, which would be in second. Right. As you see, the thing the world does not understand about Canada is we like being screwed over. We really like it. Most people vote for people that they think will do right by them. We like parties that will fuck us over and will tell us, if you let me back in, I'm going to continue to fuck you over like I have been. I won't work with anybody. Everyone's got to bow down to me and kiss my ass and, and let me run things the way I want to run things, or there's not going to be any deal. <laughs> my way or the highway. Corporate tax cuts galore, whatever. The hell I want to do. See, that's what we want here in Canada. We like to be screwed over. We want to vote someone who's going to screw us over, because either that's the case, in which case we would be the first civilization in the history of human, of the human race, the history of humanity. We would be the first people here in Canada, the Canadian people would be the first people who actually like to vote in people who they know will screw them over. And by all these uh, scandals that continuously come out, yeah, they really are criminals. Criminals are running this country, and we know it, and apparently that's what we want. We want to let in these criminals to continue to screw us over. That's what we want as Canadians. It's either that, or these poll results aren't entirely correct. What do you think? Hmm. By basic common sense. So I just wanted to point that out, that that's the reason why, in my opinion, Harper is pushing so desperately for um, this idea that they're going to get a majority government so that people will actually vote for the idea so that he might actually get back in with the minority. I hope people don't fall for that. I really don't think he stands much of a chance unless he managed to pull a fast one though, somehow. So anyway, hopefully this will mean the end of Stephen Harper. And by the way, Jack Layton's popularity in Quebec is larger than the blocks right now. Interesting that that doesn't really impact a lot in his popularity on this poll, in these poll results. You'd think it kind of would. If Quebec's falling in love with uh, Jack Layton, what about the rest of Canada? We just don't like him? Why is that? These, again, these poll results are awful funny.